Hello friends and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be talking about Microsoft Planner and all the new updates coming this month. So let's get into today's video. So for those of you who are new to Microsoft Planner, um, you have the option to access it inside of Microsoft Teams or just through the Microsoft Planner application itself. So if you haven't learned about how to access it through Microsoft Teams, I have a video that I'll link above if you wanna go, and ha go ahead and check that out. Um, and it teaches you all about how to use Microsoft Planner inside of Microsoft Teams. Now, inside of Microsoft Planner itself, you have a little bit more capabilities. You've got a couple different more views um, and options that you can look at different boards from. Uh, so I would definitely check out the differences between the two. Now, starting in October of 2024, they've got a few new updates um, to Microsoft planner that I am going to share with you guys today. So let's go over that and I'm going to share my screen and we can check it out. So there's going to be a few changes coming in October of 2024. Uh, the first one that I want to share with you guys is how you can now export a plan to Excel. This can be super useful if you guys are um, dealing with a lot of data and you want to um, track it in some sort of way. So you can go inside of any individual plan and um, export it to Excel. Another opportunity that they're giving us is the option to copy a plan and choose um, where you would like it to go. So what group you'd like to attach it to. And you can also choose what features you want to copy over. So if you only want to copy over the you know, checklist and the labels, but you don't want to keep the dates and the priority, you can just make sure not to select that and then copy it over to the new group. Another thing that can be helpful if you guys are aware of Microsoft Loop, you can now see um, Teams meeting notes in loop task lists. Um, and I can share up at the top here, if you don't know what Microsoft Loop is and you wanna check that out, I have a video about it above. Another thing that is really cool is you can have scheduled tasks. So we already have access to reoccurring tasks now in Microsoft Planner where you can you know, schedule tasks to reoccur daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, whatever you choose. Um, now, this gives you the access and the visibility to see those future scheduled tasks and you can edit who is going to receive them. So let's say somebody was removed from that team or switched to another team or somebody was added on, you can edit the recipients for the future task and it will adjust it. This is super helpful and I was really excited about this feature. Um, so make sure to check this out. The last new feature is the new templates that they're adding, but again, it is with a pre um, license. So just keep that in mind. If you don't have one of those, you won't have the access to these templates, but some of their templates are actually very useful when going into the Microsoft Planner app itself. So I would definitely check out those plans and see if it can be useful to your team. So very quickly, if you're not aware on how to use Microsoft Planner, I'm gonna give you a really quick five minute tutorial on how to use it. So I'm gonna share my screen and here is my YouTube video training plan. Um, this is what it looks like inside of Microsoft Planner. Again, if you wanna check out the Microsoft Planner inside of Microsoft Teams video, I can link that one below. Um, so you've got a few options here. You've got the grid view, you've got the board view, the chart view and the scheduled view. Grid is going to look more like an Excel document, like it's gonna have the rows and the columns for each of your tasks. It can tell you if it's in progress or not. Um, it can show you the priority and you can also label them from here. So then you've got the board view, which is going to give you these buckets. Um, these are things that you can use to drop quickly uh, different tasks in. You also have the opportunity if you connect um, this with Power Automate to um, have it automatically drop um, tasks into each bucket uh, depending on if an email is sent or a Teams uh, channel 
you know, text messages sent, whatever it might be. So that can also be super helpful. Um, then you've got the chart view. This is really just to analyze the data of a plan. So it can tell you how your certain members are doing with completing tasks, um, how many have been completed in, um, you know, the, the important or the low or the medium priority. Um, it also shows that there's any late tasks or anything like that. Um, something that's cool that they added is this view to the side. So it looks like what they did in the chart view is they added the, the charts like how it used to be, but then they added this little bar here that shows a quick view of your task just in a list view. Um, that was not there before um, when I recorded our previous video on this. So this is kind of nice to see the different tasks that they could be talking about here in the chart. Um, the last view is the schedule view. This is going to look like a calendar. It can be very helpful for scheduling and due dates when you're looking at different tasks. If you want to add members, um, you have a a few places that you can add members, but one is right up here in the members tab. If you click on this and you enter a name um, and click enter, it will add that user to this plan so that they can view um, all of the tasks and um, different boards. Then you also have the opportunity to click on these three dots here and choose members. This is going to pull up a very detailed description of the members that have access and it is actually going to utilize Outlook and pull you into Microsoft Groups. Every time you create a plan, it actually creates um, a group for the members in that plan. And you do have the opportunity to go inside of Outlook and um, send events, send emails um, to this entire group of people all at one time. So I would definitely check this out. This can be very useful when you're having project teams and you want to send out a memo to all of them quickly. So if you want to send an email to all the people in that plan, you can just go to that plans group, click send email, and it just adds um, everybody automatically from that plan. This is super helpful and I hope that you guys utilize this feature um, to keep your team really efficient. Okay, next let's go back to the board view and I'm gonna show you really quickly how to create a task. So you're gonna click add task in whichever bucket you'd like. So I'm gonna put this in the to-dos bucket. You can say, you know, whatever you want to title this task. Once you've created this, you can set a due date if you have one. So let's say I have this due next week and I'm going to assign it to myself. Then I'm going to click add task and it is going to create this right here in the to do section. Now, if you click on that task, it pulls up a bigger uh, version of the task itself and you can add things like labels. Um, you can change where you want it to go on the buckets. Um, you can change the progress of it, the priority, um, the start and the due date. And then you can also choose if you'd like it to repeat. And there is a custom option if it's very specific on when it repeats. Now, something that is important to um, pay attention to is this checklist um, option down here. This is so incredibly useful if you have things to do underneath. So let's say in this create a planner video, I have to record, then I have to edit, and then I have to post, right? So I could create a checklist that says record, edit, and post. Boom. So when you have completed, which I chose to show this on the card on this main screen here, and when I complete one of them, I just select one of it and, and it crosses it out and it tells you that you're one third of the way complete with this task. This is so useful and I really encourage companies to use this to keep track of all the individual things that you might have to do inside of each task. Now, another option that you can have is like 
If you're sharing or collaborating on something, you can add the attachment here. If it's like a Word document or something like that, um, that you want to easily access through here. And then also your team can make comments on it underneath each task. So that can also be useful when giving feedback on a specific project. So I'm going to go out of this just by clicking um, outside of the box and notice that my task is there and you see that I'm one third of the way through and I've got two more things left to do. I can also check out um, or check these things off the list um, from, from this view as well. Then if you go to the grid view, you can see it in a different way. You can see that um, I have it in my to-do bucket here and you can see the title here and who it's assigned to. But something that is kind of annoying is it doesn't give a very clear view on the checklist if you do have a checklist on this. So that's why I like to go to the board view and view each task in here. Um, but it's totally up to you and what you guys would prefer to do. If you find this plan useful or you're accessing this plan often, you can choose to pin um, this plan to the top and it just moves it all the way to the top here so you don't have to go through tons and tons of other plans at the bottom. If you click on the three dots here, there is an option to copy the link to the plan. So let's say that you wanted to add somebody um, just by sending them a link, you can choose to do that. Just click copy plan and it copies to your click clipboard and you can attach that um, to whatever, wherever you'd like. Um, just know that you want to be careful with maybe who accesses it and where you put that link. If you do want to copy this plan and maybe make a duplicate of it, if you click on the three dots here, there's a copy plan option. And this is exactly the update that we were that I was saying was coming uh, soon. This is how you would do it. You would click on those three dots and click copy plan. And you can see where, where you can choose to title it different, um, select the group of people, which again, this is tying back to um, Microsoft Outlook groups, right? we went to before and you can select a different group um, or the same one if you want and then you can choose what you'd like to include so let's say I didn't actually want um, the the labels there but I did want the dates so you would just change that and then once you've selected a group and you've selected those options to include then you'd click copy plan and it would move that plan with the connection to that group and um, it would create a whole new plan that is a copy of the one that you have here. Again, guys, this is just a quick tutorial on how to use Microsoft Planner with some of the updates that have been added this month, October 2024. Again, I promise I will always do updates on Microsoft Teams, Microsoft Planner, and all of the products in Microsoft as they change them throughout the year. So I hope this is useful to you guys. Make sure to subscribe so that you're notified anytime I upload new videos um, with new content and updates as Microsoft does them. But I hope you guys enjoy this video and tune into the next one. Bye.